I want to show you how to do shading on white clothing in your acrylic portrait. Hi, I'm Matt Filio, and I was working on this 20 by 24 acrylic portrait. Um, previously, I did a video showing you how to do shading and wrinkles on lighter colored clothing. In this example, it's gray. But today, I want to work on the woman's clothing. She's wearing white. I want to show you how to do that. It is a little trickier, um, and if you've worked with acrylic before, you understand it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to paint clothing. Um, but I want to show you how to do it. Um, so it's going to involve putting darker areas, darker areas where you might otherwise not expect doing that. And in fact, um, just to help you along with this, I'd like to give you a free gift. It's called my value checker tool. So that's something you can download below right now. And it's in the description of the video and in the top comment. And what the value checker tool will do for you is it'll give you a value chart with several different tints, you know, skin tone tints, neutral tone, warm gray tones. And you can actually set that value checker tool up on your canvas and compare and contrast the different values and make sure you're on target. And that will increase your realism because I'm not sure if you're aware of this, um, but value is so much more important than color. A lot of artists beginning uh, really concentrate on skin tones, but skin tones is just lower on the priority list and values are like way up here. They're much, much more important for capturing realism in your portraits. So get that value checker tool. Again, my free gift to you just for watching this video. Now, again, I want to discuss this element here and how to get the realism. But before I get any further in the painting process, let me just pray a quick prayer here, a blessing. Father, I do ask that you would bless this portrait, bless this video, and enable me to teach the students how to shade on white clothing, uh, keep them healthy and strong, and give them continued provision and blessing as they uh, use their gift that you've given them. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, on my palette, I have a couple of gray tints and I used raw umber dark, uh, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and raw, actually, sorry, I already said that, raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, um, and alizarin crimson. And I think I added a little bit of titanium white as well, uh, just to make it more gray. But when you're working on these really dark areas here, and if you look at my reference photo, we're just trying to emulate what we see and it's actually black or almost black in some of these areas by her armpit and the light can't get to these areas. So you wanna make sure, even though she's wearing light clothing, that you get the dark areas where the light just isn't gonna hit. So that is super, super important um, is just to really see the values on your reference photo or from life and interpret them accurately. Now I'm adding some raw umber dark to this mix just to give it a little more warmth. And with those three colors, you really can create a gray in almost any tint you want. Uh, you could add Indian yellow if you want to shift it more to the greenish side. But uh, this works for most grays. Raw umber dark, that's kind of a dark brown, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. Those three colors. You can also add titanium white to make it more opaque as well. Now. Using my small round brush, I've got a size four round Windsor and Newton brush, and I'm just basically adding a little bit of these darker values in a few key areas. Now let's move down just a bit. I want to extend this shadow here. This was quite dark, but we want to extend that and bring it in a little further down along this edge. It's so according to the reference photo, that shadow is quite dark. And we have a very dark shadow in here, so I'm gonna just add a little more raw umber dark and ultramarine blue. And then just a touch of alizarin crimson. And maybe just a little more ultramarine blue just so it's not quite so brownish and purplish. And see that kind of balances it out when you do that. All right, and so now we just darken this shadow here on the underside of this wrinkle. Now you really wanna know where your light source is and just keep those things in mind. If you only were to paint exactly what you saw in your reference photo and replicate it like a copy machine, you wouldn't even have to really think about the light source. But because we do 
some interpretation of what we see, we're not machines, then it is good to be cognizant of what's going on in the environment of which you're painting. So for example, you would look at your reference photo, you would pay attention to where the shadows are falling on the face and on the clothing, and if there's any cast shadows from the body onto the ground or uh, something they're sitting on, you'd pay attention to the orientation of those shadows, and then from there you'd be able to determine that the opposite direction would be the light source. Now sometimes you're gonna have a couple different light sources. You're gonna have reflected light. You know, for example, on her bottom of her chin, there's a little reflected light, even on her nose. You have a shadow and then we have a little bit of a highlight below there because that white clothing is reflecting light. But uh, I digress because we are <laughs> we are trying to focus on the clothing right now. So back to that, we're paying attention to the light source and recognizing the lights coming from above. So we have these deep shadows underneath the wrinkles of the clothing. Um, like this for example, this is quite dark because not a lot of light can get to that. Um, we've got this shadow in here. Just go over that and darken it again. We're adding this darkness in a few different layers. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going we're gonna to extend the shadow up just a little bit as well. <clears throat> now we're, we have a dark shadow here next to her arm. So there's that. Um, right here on this side, that shadow could get a little darker, but I don't want to use the same color. It's, it's too dark. So let's take what's on the brush, just leave it on there, and add it to something on the palette that's lighter and mix a new tint that's just a little lighter in value. And guess what? That's still too dark. So you're going to have to do a little playing around. We're going to add a little more over here. Okay, and this is going to be a little lighter. Okay, that's much better. I like that. Let's just zoom in so you can really see what's going on. Sorry about that camera shaking there. All right, I'll have to zoom out just a little bit because my camera won't turn that far. But this gives you an idea. And we just put in a little bit of a shape here. We're corresponding to what we see in the reference photo. Um, so in the reference photo, uh, this is what we've got right there. So that specific shape, we're looking at that and we're just trying to replicate that here. All right. Now we're gonna add a little bit of shading above. Okay, that's good. It's gonna need another layer to smooth out, but that'll be good for now. And then we're going to just kind of smooth things out. We're gonna add a little bit of titanium white on this part of the mix. And because white cools things down, we just bring in a little bit of raw or dark, which is slightly warmer. Um, and we're gonna add that right here and just kind of smooth out that shadow. So that, that gives it a nice even distribution. Add some more white. Well, I guess I also inadvertently added a bit of alizarin crimson because I had some of that wiped off in the top here. So now this color is a bit too pink. Bring in a little more blue. Okay, and then we'll just add that to the edges of this color. And let's put in a little bit of raw umber dark. Now you might say, well, Matt, why don't you just use ivory black or Mars black or something instead of trying to mix your own grays or even Payne's gray. And yeah, you can do that. I mean, you certainly could, but I like to mix my own hues because you know, if I were just trying to use gray, I wouldn't have the color dialed in. Her shirt's got different tints, and uh, it's not just gray. It's got some bluish tints, and then it's a little warmer in some areas, a little cooler in some areas. And I'm really trying to see those distinctions in color. And that really aids the realism. It really enhances the realism. And I guess that was off camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so we're just adding this little glaze right here smoothing that out, and then I added a little bit of shading just in that spot there. Um, and now, I'm gonna add a little bit of shading on the bottom of her shirt, so let's pick something right here that's a little bit lighter. All right, and we're just gonna hit that along the edge. There it goes. And then I see this bottom edge of her clothing, that needs to turn the form a little bit more as well. So we're gonna go with this kind of medium grayish hue 
Uh, it's got a little bit of warmth to it. Actually, it's got a little bit of the alizarin crimson in it. And I think that warmth will help because it's going to show kind of that reflected color that we have from the man's uh, finger there, his hands as he's, you know, holding his wife. So we're going to capture that. Okay, a little bit of that shading there. Now we mix this in with some white. There it is. You can see it now. A little lighter. And we just kind of blend the edge out, do some wet on wet blending. So even though we're using the glazing technique and we start off very translucent, I'm not afraid to get a little bit opaque in some areas just to smooth things out and to give the paint a little more of a substantive feel. Okay, a little cut up along the edge of that area so this light can stand out, this the highlighted area of this part of her arm. And remember the lighting scenario. Remember the light source is kind of from above. It's basically from above, maybe a little bit from the left side. And so with that, then this part of her forearm is being highlighted. All right, so this is where we're at. And I just kind of wanted to show you part of the process here of adding shading uh, to light clothing. And I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a little more clarity on the process. Um, if you want to learn more about the acrylic glazing technique, go to realisticacrylic.com. I've got tutorials there, and I've got tips to help you with your portrait painting, so check that out. Uh, free, free classes, PDF downloadable guides, all those good things at realisticacrylic.com. Check that out, and I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of what I'm doing here on this YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe so that you get notified when I do new videos, and it also helps this to be seen by others too. Um, lastly, please share this video with a friend if you enjoyed this content here, and leave me a comment. If you have a question on acrylic portrait painting, on the glazing technique, on anything I discussed here in this video, or anything pertaining to art and life, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. All right, thank you again for watching. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.